everyone, it's Julia. Today I have for you a, a new pattern that I just put in my Etsy shop and that'll be, it'll be all linked down below for you. It is my Empower design, I call it. It's Girls Compete, Women Empower. Uh, and it does have two different sizes and it has all of the applique pieces on it that you need to cut out. It has a small size and then a little bit larger size and then a couple sheets of instructions. I want to go over two different projects that I made with this design. I have this sweatshirt. For any of you have, who have followed me for a while know I do a lot of sweatshirt makeovers. On this one I have put the words on with free motion and the design is also free motion. But I have a new technique on how to get my words onto my fabric, especially fabric that are heavy and you can't see through. And so I do want to go over that with you today, so that'll be something a little bit different. Did a different neckline on this. And another thing I did on this particular sweatshirt is I opened up the side seams, which I do often. It makes it a more of like a comfortable tunic style. I left the back band as the original band, but on the front I removed the band and then added uh, just some fabric on the bottom that's the same as what's on the applique. So I just thought this is, these sweatshirts are so wonderful, they're super comfortable, they're a comfort colored sweatshirt and, and again I'll link all my supplies down below so you can take a look, but they have that washed feel. They're very roomy and I love wearing them just with my yoga pants, my leggings or skinny jeans or something like that. They just work really well. Um, I do cut the, the cuff off too. The cuff is edge finished. The neckline is and then I also edge finish that slit. And so we're going to get it started. This is going to be one of the designs and this is the larger applique. I also did a pillow using the smaller one. And on this one, I'm able to see right through. This is just a muslin and was able to write the words just with a fabric marker. Just by tracing it, I can see the design underneath. So we'll go over that too. So I've got the pillow, I've got the sweatshirt, and we're going to start with some deep construction. I'm cutting a slit on the each of the sides going up about five inches and now cutting that seam out. I'm quickly doing the same thing to the other side approximately five inches up and also removing that seam. Now I want to remove the front of this band so I am just cutting right above the seam and also on the cuffs removing the cuffs and cutting just right above that seam. And then on the neckline I'm going to actually take my, my heat eraser pens, my fabric pens here, and just drawing a line at an angle. And this is for the band that I am making. These strips are 17, 16 inches long by about 5 inches wide. They will be doubled. I'm laying them in an in a um, 45 degree angle there and then drawing my line that I need to sew on. I'm going to be sewing right on that line. And now I'm going to have a long strip. I'm going to be cutting that piece. I'm going to use that extra piece there for my applique pieces. Pressing my seam allowance open and then I'm going to press this up. I like the, this diagonal look in the front and that is that is why I, I, I did this strip this way. You can certainly just sew it straight across as well. Just folding up the ends a half inch and then folding it again a half inch. Now each sweatshirt is going to be a little bit different as far as your dimension going across this front. So you just want to measure it and then add an inch on both ends. And then that inch is um, turned up and I will edge finish this just by st just straight stitch across across both ends here. I decided to leave this band just doubled because the other band, the, the one that I'm leaving on is also a double a double 
a piece of fabric. So they'll be similar in weight and just a similar feel to them. Just pinning this on. And we'll be taking a half inch um, seam there. I ironed it and now I'm going to, to um, top stitch this right next to the seam. Just, I'm doing the large size on my sweatshirts. So I took out my large size applique pieces and picked out several different fabrics there. Using a heat and bond light and I will be drawing on the paper side just drawing around each of these um, shapes. I do, you do need nine of the, of the little triangles for the sun. And I've chosen two different fabrics for that. This, the sun is different than the, than the triangle rays. I'm rough cutting these out now. And then we'll be ironing them, fitting them. I just have scraps. So I'm just fitting them where they fit on the, on the scraps of fabric. And then ironing them in place. Now all um, iron-on adhesives are different, so just read your instructions on how long to leave your iron and all that good stuff. Now it's to cut cutting these out and you want to cut right on the line. Peel off that back and then just place it where you want. I do want my son right in the middle of my sweatshirt and also right in the middle of the pillow, which is my next um, design. So that I, I laid on first and then just following my, my little pattern there and just laying these on into place. Some of these pieces are a little fiddly, but there's not very many of them, so it goes quite quickly. And then once they're in place the way, the, the way you want, want, you just put your iron on them and iron everything down into place. I am adding a piece of stitch and tear stabilizer to the back of this. This just gives it a little something extra and helps keep the knit not to stretch out when I'm sewing. And that is just, once it's stitched, I just tear it away in the back. Onto my sewing machine, and I'm edge stitching here on, this is the neckline, I'm just edge stitching this first. This is an applique stitch that, that I'm using almost looks like a, bl a blanket stitch. And then onto the sleeve opening as well. And I sew this on the inside, so I'm sewing in the round, sewing on the inside of my sleeve, going all the way around here. And then again on the side vent that I created. I do not edge finish the ribbing part of it, just the sweatshirt part. There you can see it. Now on to my free motion. Now I have my free motion foot on. Sometimes it's called a darner foot. I have my feed dogs dropped. My stitch length is set at zero. And I am just outlining all these pieces. This is a garment that's going to be washed, and so a lot of times I will go around my pieces two or three times. This gives it a sketched on look. Sometimes I get off a little bit, but it really overall looks, I like the look of it. And it does help with, with just laundrability and um, keeping, keeping it from fraying if I have more than one stitched line on my pieces. So again, I'm just outlining, I'm doing all the moving because my feed dogs are dropped. I do have black thread on the top and in my bobbin. And I am just using a regular Coates and Clark um, all-purpose thread for this. Going down and outlining the shoes.
And I show maybe a little bit of the sun here too. And now I'm on to doing these arms. There's only, I only have two hands, he, three hands here, because one of the hands are behind the little person. But you can certainly add all four hands too and just have a hand on each shoulder. Now it's on for the, to the words. I use a salvy water soluble. I'm going to have all this stuff linked down below, but this is a water soluble stabilizer. And I'm just cutting the piece that I need. Now see how easily it is to read the, my words through this. It's, it's a clear um, stabilizer and it completely dissolves in water. The tricky part is, is finding a pen that works on it. And these work the best. And I'll also link it down below. It's the Uniball uni pens. It's like a gel pen. So ballpoint pens don't work very well, I've, I've discovered. It almost needs to be like a gel pen or maybe even a marker would work. So you want to experiment with that. But I am just tracing my letters. You want to let it dry a little bit. I am left-handed, so I, I tend to have to leave mine dry, otherwise it smudges. But I'm just tracing all my letters and now laying them onto my sweatshirt. Getting it even and, and lined up straight and then pinning this into place. I'm thinking a masking tape would also work for this part instead of the pins. I didn't have any handy, and so I just used my pins for this. I'm at my sewing machine again and I'm going to free motion all of these letters on and I'm going right through that solvy or that stabilizer. I go back and forth at the beginning just to tie my knot and just following right on right on the line. If you get off, don't worry about it. I mean it's once you get at the hang of this though, it's pretty easy to do. This is, um, I've not sped up at all. I will at, at in a little bit here, but I wanted you to see how fast you can actually go or, or how slow you actually go when you're doing these, these letters. And now I've sped it up a little bit and I'm just gonna show you just a, a little bit more of this. I don't show the whole thing. Once it's completely sewn, the, this just rips off very easily, and I just take the big pieces off. The rest of it, you can just spritz with water, and it, it will completely dissolve. You can see some of, the, some of it's still on there, but just by spraying with your water bottle, and then gently rubbing it, it will all completely be gone. Just an easy way of putting on letters. For the pillow, that center muslin piece is nine by nine, and then I've cut two and a half strips that will um, surround this pillow, and then two and, a, and four two and a half squares for the corners. So my strips are nine inches by two and a half inches, and then I have two and a half inch squares. Just taking a quarter of an inch seams and then pressing um, my seams to the darker fabric. And then we'll be top stitching this too, just to give it a little bit different, nice a, a nice finish to it. Have my square sewn onto my other strips, and then also sewing that on top. And I have my my top of my my pillow case, my pillow my pillow now. I have a piece of warm and natural batting, cut approximately the same. I've cut a little bit larger. 
it'll be trimmed down once I get my applique on there. And I'm using the small size now for my pillow. Very much like the other applique that I did for my sweatshirt and just drawing on with my heat and bond light. Just drawing on all these, tracing all these little pieces. Have my pieces cut out. Again, using the picture as my guide and starting with the sun right in the middle of this. Upper middle, I should say. I decided to put a sun in each of these corners as well. So I cut four other little circles. And I will we'll just be adding some of the detail on these little suns with my free motion. And then once everything is in place, I just take a, my iron again. Looks like, looks like I forgot some feet there, but I go back and add those feet. Now to put the words on the pillow top, I'm just going to put my, my little piece right underneath there. And I can see that just very easily through this lightweight muslin. And so I'm just going to be tracing these words on to my, my pillow top um, using a fabric marker. I'm using the fabric markers from Arteza for this. They have two different ends to them. They have a, a bullet end and then a thicker end. And I'm just using the finer tip for this project and going to be just tracing these letters on. Now these are a fabric marker and they are wash permanent so that it can be washed. I do recommend just spot cleaning my, my pillows but they these are a washable marker. And again just tracing tracing all those letters right through onto that muslin. And have that written on now. And using my heat eraser pens again and adding the arms onto these onto these little girls. Now these, if I do get off with my stitching, will completely disappear with, with my iron. And then I go to my sewing machine. I didn't show this, but I completed the same way as my other one using the free motion and added those little pokes onto the, on my sun, those little sun rays. That's what I love about free motion is you can draw with your thread and just add those details so easily. Finishing off my pillow now with my right sides together and marking my opening. You want to leave about a five inch opening and take about a fourth a half inch seam allowance going all the way around. When I trim this off I do leave a little bit more on the bottom for my of the backing just for my when I when I turn it under just to have that little extra. Turning it inside out and using my pokey tool to get those corners nice and and, and out and um, in place. I really like the added suns to the corners of these pillows. It just adds so much. Just folding that opening under and pressing it. I do have uh, another video on how I finish my pillow tops. I actually stuff them and then sew that opening with my sewing machine using my zipper foot. And I do go over that and I will link that down below for you, that video. Here's some pictures the finished projects. I hope you have a chance to try these. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye for now.